This is Telecom TV's ultimate guide to the Telecom Infra project. The Telecom Infra project was established in February 2016 and now has more than 500 member companies. Its board of directors is heavy on operators, with Deutsche Telekom, BT, Telefonica and Vodafone joining Facebook, Nokia and Intel. The goal is to disaggregate the traditional network deployment approach by working together as a community to explore new technologies, develop new business models and also to facilitate new investments. Work is allocated into three areas, access, backhaul and core and management, encompassing 11 separate project groups. The Edge Computing Project Group is focused on enabling operators to more efficiently deliver new services and applications by using MEC to turn the RAN Network Edge into an open media and service hub. The operator typically have a lot of central offices around, in the thousands, right? And then if you count their uh, cell tower presence, you're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands in, in some markets. And you compare with the uh, typical data center, the, the, the scale is, is different. It's a natural place to be. So it's really becoming monetizing something they already have, the location. Bringing connectivity to remote parts of the world is expensive and challenging. The Open Cellular Project Group promotes cost-effective and sustainable base station solutions for rural areas using an open source platform. Open Cellular is all about uh, a vision of creating a very small, low-cost, um, uh, open source uh, design and architecture so that anyone uh, with a few thousand dollars can get it to a small village. So Open Cellular is about building a solution for that very low end entry marketplace and we bring the smart off-grid management because that last power cable is the barrier to entry. Without power you can't deliver the service and with off-grid power, it needs to be managed. The VRAN Frontal Project Group is pioneering a virtualized RAN solution comprised of low-cost remote radio units that can be managed and dynamically reconfigured by a centralized infrastructure over non-ideal transport. So for example, in an in-building situation, when you want to do multi-host with the highest technologies on front hall, normally you'd need some really serious bandwidth to do that. Now we think with the compression technologies that we're testing out with VRAN, that we can get that down to using existing infrastructure. In other areas, in the remote rural areas, when you want to do multi-host, using GDOTFAST for backhaul, for example. The Solutions Integration Project Group is developing an open-run architecture by defining open interfaces between internal components. The goal is to broaden the mobile ecosystem to drive a faster pace of innovation and migrate to 5G as solutions, components and technology become available. The Open Optical Packet Transport Project Group is defining a dense wavelength division multiplexing open packet transport architecture that enables new innovation and also prevents carriers from being locked into specific implementations. We kind of put an optical colored interface on top of our top rack switch and became Voyager. And that was the, what we believe the first switch router and transport white box that you can find in the industry. So we're partnering with, with Facebook as the primary software platform to run on Voyager. We're in the process of porting our software to the platform so customers can have you know, full access uh, to all of the software protocols and functionality they need. We have competitors, we have academia helping, uh, supporting. We have, of course, a lot of operators who uh, steer and control it. And that's how we gave uh, our governance model too. We have an operator council that actually controls this uh, group. The Millimeter Wave project group is defining 60 gigahertz wireless networking solutions to address the growing demand for bandwidth in dense, highly populated cities. The engineering effort will focus on creating a low-cost hardware design alongside an innovative suite of software tools and best practices. We are focusing on specifically like three scenarios, uh, wireless to the home or building, backhaul for either small cells or Wi-Fi access points, or delivering backhaul connectivity for smart cities, right? These are the three fundamental areas that we are focusing on, and it's, it's really building a fixed access network to deliver high bandwidth connectivity in these, in these cases. We are uh, bringing together 
on one side uh, what Facebook had uh, developed in this space uh, in the unlicensed spectrum uh, with the mesh approach, uh, with uh, the economics we are bringing to the table from the DT side and some other uh, activities. We're doing joint standardization uh, towards IEEE, for example. The Open RAN project group is aimed at reducing the costs associated with building mobile networks and enabling easier market entry for smaller vendors, focusing on RAN solutions that can be deployed on general purpose processing platforms. The end-to-end -end network slicing project group is focused on network slicing as it applies to new and upcoming network architectures. It will identify end-to-end -end use cases that can help meet some of the key challenges in the next generation network slicing arena. We don't want to have to standardize every single slice because that would be impossible. But a radio manufacturer or a microwave manufacturer who's part of the slicing, they need to know what are the fundamental parameters and resources that they should be offering up to a slice. So how do we actually get that across when you've got many, many different types of network elements across a slice? Is that a standard situation? No, it's not. We think it's more about working on real use cases with the ecosystem so it becomes pretty much clear to everybody what are the fundamental resources we expect to be offered up to slicing. Then how you actually implement the orchestration and the slicing around that is something that should be open to, to everybody in the standards organization. The Artificial Intelligence and Applied Machine Learning Project Group will apply AI and ML to network planning, operations and customer behavior identification to optimize the service experience and increase automation. The People and Process Project Group is sharing cultural and process transformation practices that can improve operators' key metrics. It is focused on continuous change culture, talent development and DevOps. Well, a lot of what's going on in the industry now is the move to softwareization, which we know about, and, and that's a different way of working, doing software, than the traditional ways that have been done in telecom. And a lot of our engagement through TIP, we learned that this uh, ways of working and, and culture and people and talent development was important to that. It's a bit of a change for the industry, and we felt that it was something we needed to include in TIP. If you looked at it in the whole, one third is, could be taken from Facebook's data center experience and ways of working for software and apply directly. A third of it, and we've learned this from the people and process group, has to be adapted and that's what we've done collaborating with, with the operators that are in the group and the, and the others. Uh, and then a third of it doesn't apply at all. And then there's other things that the telco industry has that uh, just we don't know anything about. But this is the, the power of the community idea is by sharing and then developing it together and implementing it in the telco environment, we can learn and share what will work for the industry. The System Integration and Site Optimization Project Group is addressing system integration requirements with cost-effective and efficient end-to-end -end solutions that serve rural and urban areas in optimal and profitable ways. TIP has also created labs and telco-hosted ecosystem centers. The TIP Community Labs are designed to enable rapid, real-world pilots leading to at-scale adoption of new infra solutions. And we did set up a community lab in Berlin dealing with millimeter wave technologies. So it took us less than one month to bring it into place. It was great success. The TIP Ecosystem Acceleration Centers, or TEKS, are designed to create global sustainable ecosystems to attract the best entrepreneurs and innovative investors. I think these labs play, um, I would say, a three-dimensional role. One, of course, in proving the concepts. Two, is putting these ecosystem uh, uh, members together. And third is, uh, I would want to put it as encouraging the disruptive startups to try and uh, take bold new steps to really create the, and realize the true potential that is out there in this, uh, in this industry. So there you have it, the ultimate guide to the Telecom Infra project. Keep watching Telecom TV for the latest in-depth coverage from TIP.